All right. Oh, I think I have problem with my MacBook to to share my slide. Can can organizer help me to do that? To share the slide? Sure, I think uh Dr. Adila. Okay. Sorry, sorry for that. Uh, thank you very much. Sorry, Dr. Adila. I can't try in is it in the Google Drive already? Yes. yes okay, yes, okay. Yes. Let me share. Then. All right. Hold on a second. Okay. All right, okay. I will share the screen for you. Okay. All right. Okay. Can I start? Sure. Okay. So thank you very much and sorry for the hiccup. Okay. So uh, now I will present my talk uh, entitled Edible and Medicinal Mushrooms Properties and Cultivation. So uh, before that, Assalamualaikum and very good morning to all of you from Malaysia and from Indonesia. Before I start, I would like to say thank you uh, to the organizer, UNISA, uh, and also uh, UMP, okay, for inviting me to this prestige uh, event. So thank you very much. Okay, so uh, for today, uh, I will present a little bit about the, 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 general, the, the general information about the mushroom itself. And after that, followed by the, some of the research study regarding the cultivation of the mushroom that have been done previously in my, in my lab. So, uh, yeah, um, again, uh, let me introduce myself again. I'm Associate Professor Dr. Aizina Mazila Binti Ramli, okay? So now we move to the next slide. So um, when we talk about mushroom, next slide, please. Okay, so when we talk about mushroom, so a mushroom is actually the fleshy uh, spore-bearing fruiting body of a fungus. So it is typically produced above ground, on soil, or on its food source. Okay, so you can see that uh, mushroom is categorized as a fungi, but it is uh, contain the fruiting bodies. Okay, so for mushroom to be uh, cultivated, it need the carbon and nitrogen source. Okay, so that's why usually you can see the fungus can be seen uh, on top of the ground when there are some uh, what byproduct or some something that need to be degraded. So you can see the 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 mushroom the the uh, the uh, the mushroom will be thrift okay usually uh, if the moisture or the water content at the environment is enough for them to thrift okay so on soil or on the food source so mushroom have been eaten and appreciated for their flavor economic and also ecological values and uh, not forget medicinal properties for many years okay this is uh, what can be offered by mushroom, the flavor, the economical value, the ecological to, to conserve the environment and also the medicinal properties. So actually they are edible and medicinal mushroom uh, are the major component of the global mushroom industries. Okay, okay. Uh, so we go to the next slide. <clears throat> So if you can see, this is based on the analysis, the nutritional percentage of the mushroom. So it is uh, uh, the, the protein content of the mushroom can be up to 48%, the dry matter 
about 10%. So carbohydrates about, uh, it is, can be up to 60%. And the water content of the mushroom is up to 90%. That's why you can see that the structure of the mushroom itself, it is uh, mushy, uh, mushy means that, uh, and it is uh, a little bit uh, soft because of the content of the water in the mushroom, okay? So this is based on the analysis. So we move to the next slide, please. Thank you. So um, based on the study, it is reported that there are at least 12,000 species of fungi that can be considered to be mushroom. It is a lot, right? Okay, from the total number of fungi, 12,000 species is considered to be mushroom. Means that it contains the fruiting bodies. Okay, with at least 2,000 species showing various degrees of edibility. Okay, from uh, 12,000 species, 200 species can be eaten. Okay, and uh, furthermore, over 200 species have been collected from the wild and used traditionally for various traditional medical purposes. Okay, and mostly. Uh, uh, happen in the Far East, okay? And from the statistic also, it is reported that 35%, 35 species of the mushroom have been cultivated commercially. And 20% from 35 are cultivated on the industrial scale. Means that it has been up, upscale, okay? Because of the properties of the mushroom itself, okay? So we move to the next slide. So now I move one by one from edible mushroom to the medicinal mushroom. So we go for the edible mushroom first. So for the, for the introduction, edible mushroom is the mushroom cultivation has become increasingly popular around the world. So in Malaysia itself, there are many species of edible mushrooms which are either cultivated, means that it is a uh, uh, cultivate artificially, not from the wild. Okay, for example, agaricus uh, subspecies, okay, auricularia, pleurotus, or harvested from the wild, for example, Ganoderma subspecies, polyphorus, and termitomyces. So, this is some of the species that uh, popularly use uh, as, a, as a human food, okay, which is edible. So, uh, there are seven different kinds of mushroom cultivated in Malaysia with the grey oyster being the most popular ones, okay? Followed by the white oyster, ganoderma, shiitake, and button mushroom, okay? So in Malaysia, oyster mushroom have been cultivated commercially, uh, upscaling, and the market value of the oyster mushroom also is large in Malaysia. Maybe because of the, the, the flavour, the... Uh, the, the medium which is simple, okay, the medium of the, the mushroom is simple for the cultivation and many more. So that's why it is, uh, it become one of the most, uh, what, uh, preferable uh, species of the mushroom that have been cultivated in Malaysia. Okay, so next. So now, uh, due to that, I will go through one by one of the edible mushrooms, starting, uh, starting with oyster mushroom. So the oyster mushroom, okay, uh, pleuritus species is one of several edible mushroom species grown for their flavor and nutritional benefits. Okay, so nutri nutritional benefits uh, such as the protein content is very high in this species of the mushroom, the carbohydrate, the fiber, the minerals, okay, so this is some of the minerals value of this, uh, of this mushroom, okay. So members of the genus Pleuritus are among the main species selected for commercial cultivation owing to their adaptability to both tropical and temperate conditions throughout the world. So uh, yeah, the robustness of this uh, species make this species is preferable to be uh, commercially cultivated actually. Okay, so the fungi grow naturally on and near trees in temperature. So uh, in nature, it is usually can be found 
on or near the trees in temperate and subtropic forests around the world, and they are grown commercially in many countries, not only in Malaysia. Also, mushrooms are eaten in variety of cuisines and are especially popular in Chinese, Japanese, and also Korean cooking. Uh, they can be dried and are typically eaten a cooked. Okay, means that usually uh, it is uh, the component of the dishes. Okay, not not eaten as a raw. Okay, so we move to the next slide. So uh, this is the example of the subspecies of the mushroom. As, as you can see here, uh, they are gray oyster mushroom because the color is gray. Pink oyster mushroom. Okay, due to the color white oyster mushroom and yellow oyster mushroom. However, in Malaysia, the grey oyster mushroom is the famous one. Okay, uh, and the, the, the flavor is also the champion among the other mushroom. White oyster mushroom is the second, followed, uh, the second uh, famous mushroom cultivated in Malaysia. And uh, pink and yellow oyster mushroom is frequently cultivated, okay, artificially in Malaysia. So we go to the next slide. Okay, so after uh, ocean mushroom, I would like to introduce about the split gilt mushroom. Okay, so split gilt mushroom or the scientific name is Schizophyllum commune is a species of fungus in the genus of Schizophyllum. So the mushroom resembles an uh, undulating wave of tightly packed coral, okay? Uh, or loose Chinese fan, okay, gillies or spilt gills, vary from creamy yellow to pale white in color. So the color can be creamy, the color can be brown a little bit, or sometimes it is white, okay, depend on the, uh, the, the edges, sometimes depend on the edges of, the, of this mushroom. So when uh, it is uh, firstly bloom, the color is white, but after some uh, time when it is uh, become mature, the color will turn from white into uh, a little bit yellow and also can be brown. So this is uh, based on my observation during the uh, cultivation of this kind of the mushroom. So it is found in the white or on decaying trees after rainy seasons followed by dry spells where the mushroom are naturally collected. Okay, it can be found um, uh, in the nature actually. And uh, in Malaysia, it is, uh, one of the famous mushroom because of the flavor. It is really nice to be eaten. And it is known for its high medicinal value and aromatic taste profile, okay? It has recently attracted the medical industry for its immuno immunomodulatory, antifungal, antineoplastic, and antiviral activities that are higher than those or any other glucan complex carbohydrate. So this is some of the medicinal properties of this kind of the mushroom, okay, split grid mushroom. Okay, I believe that this kind of mushroom also can be seen naturally in Indonesia, okay, because of our temperature is seen. Okay, next. Now we move to the next, uh, uh, what, net mushroom, okay, to be discussed today, which is um, black fungus. Okay, so black fungus is an edible white mushroom, sometimes known as a three ear or cloud ear fungus, given its dark ear like shape. Okay, this is for the black fungus. Okay, the structure is like ear, sometimes that's why sometimes we call it as three ear or cloud ear fungus. So, why predominantly, predominantly found in China, it's also thrived in tropical climates like the Pacific Island. Nigeria, Hawaii, and also India. Okay, it grows on tree trunks and fallen logs in white, but can also be cultivated as well. Okay, even though we can find it in the nature, in view, uh, around the, in the environment, in the uh, natural environment, it also can be uh, artificially cultivated in the, in the lab, okay, or in the, in the premise, okay. Uh, it is known for its jelly-like consistency, consistency and distinct cheviness. Okay, uh, black fungus is a popular culinary ingredient across a range of Asian dishes. Okay, you can find it in the, uh, sometimes they put it in the soup, in the tom yum and so on. So it has likewise been used in traditional Chinese medicine also for hundreds of years. Okay. 
So black fungus is a popular ingredient in Malaysia, Chinese, and also Maori uh, cuisine. Because since the 19th century, black fungus have been used in traditional Chinese medicine to alleviate symptoms of several conditions, including jaundice and also sore throats. Okay, this is some of the other properties of the black fungus. Okay, now we move to the next one. Next slide. Okay, so as you can see, this is uh, the appearance or the figure of the uh, black fungus. So at the right hand, at the left hand, this is the dried black fungus usually can be found in the in the market. Okay, while in the right hand, this is the fresh black fungus. You can see that the, the jelly look structure, jelly like structure of this kind of fungus. Okay, so we move to the next slide. Okay, so now um, uh, I would like to introduce about the straw mushroom. Okay, straw mushroom is also uh, the scientific name for this mushroom is known as Bovarella volvaki, which is known as Chinese mushroom or straw mushroom. It is an edible basidiomycete that was introduced into China in the 18th century, and it was so valuable that it was often presented as a tribute to Chinese royalty. So this, uh, for, uh, from my experience, this kind of fungus is very unique. When it first bloomed, the structure is like an egg. Okay, the structure is like an egg, as you can see in this figure, but after... Uh, after the, the sometimes okay so the this the the what the the structure will broken up and then the fruiting bodies will go outside okay so this is when it bloom it start blooming okay from the egg like structure into the fruiting bodies of the mushroom so and the taste of this mushroom is also very good however this kind of mushroom is not uh, cannot stand very at very long time means that the chef life of this mushroom is uh is uh, what uh very limited okay very uh, maybe after one day it's not the taste will become not so good okay so in uh 20, 2010 the annual output of uh, v volcai on the chinese mainland was uh 330000 tons which accounted for more than 80% of the global output so wheel volcai is typical edible straw mushroom with a high temperature tolerance that prefer, pref, preferentially grow at 30 degrees Celsius. So its fruiting bodies are popular with consumers owing to their taste and high nutrient contents. So uh, for your information, most of the fungus that I deal with uh, usually require very low uh, or ambient temperature, means that uh, they need less than uh, 29 to and below temperature for them to grow and cultivate. Okay, so for this uh, kind of mushroom, it is uh, a little, it is high temperature tolerance that can that can adapt to temperature up to 30 degrees Celsius. So this is the good thing about this kind of mushroom. So moreover, will volcai contains many bioactive substances with medicinal value such as anti-cancer associated polysaccharides, immunosuppressive protein, and immunoregulation associated agglutinins. Okay, so this is some of the medicinal properties of this mushroom. So next, we move to the next slide. Now, um, this is... I move to the medicinal mushroom. Actually, there are a lot of edible mushroom in the market, but for today, due to the time limitation, uh, I just present some of the edible mushroom that uh, that related also to my study. Okay, now we move to the medicinal mushroom. So medicinal mushrooms are mushrooms that are used as medicine. They have been used to treat infection for hundreds of years, mostly in Asia. So today, medicinal mushrooms are also used to treat lung disease and cancer. For more than 30 years, medicinal mushrooms have been approved as an addition to standard cancer treatments in Japan and China. So in this country, mushrooms have been used safely for a long time, either all alone or combined with radiation or chemotherapy. So in Asia, there are more than 100 types of mushrooms used to treat cancer, and some of them more common ones, uh, some of the more common ones are Galoderma, okay, Lucidum, or also known as Reishi, 
and also uh, Tramitis uh, Vescola and many more. Okay, this is some of the of the famous mushroom that have been used as a medicinal uh, supplement. Okay. Now we move to the next slide. Okay. Now I would like to explain a little bit about tiger meat mushroom. This is also the latest study uh, from my team. Okay to evaluate the properties of this, the I mean, the traditional properties of this mushroom. During the COVID-19, this mushroom is uh, become uh, what famous due to the, the, the what the, uh, the perception that this mushroom can treat the, uh, what the lung inflammation. Okay, so this is the it is known as the tiger meat mushroom. So the tiger meat mushroom, TMM, or the scientific name is Lignosus rhinosaurus, have been used for a long time by indigenous communities in South East Asia region as traditional medicine for different ailments, including respiratory disorders. So this is what I'm saying just now, where this kind of mushroom, it is uh, reported contain elements that can uh, that can uh, be used to treat uh, the problem in the resp respiratory, okay? So that's why because of the COVID-19 involved with the resp respiratory, so uh, some of the people use this kind of the mushroom as the supplement, as the food supplement, okay? To reduce the, the, the effect of the COVID-19. Okay, so the beneficial effect of TMM have been proven through in vivo, in vitro model, and also in clinical studies. This mushroom is commonly known as Cendawan Susu Rimau, okay, in Malaysia. I don't know in, in Indonesia uh, whether, whether this mushroom has different name, okay, or Kulat Susu Rimau, meaning the tiger meat mushroom. Okay, there are some story actually behind the name of this uh, tiger meat mushroom, okay. So TMM was successfully cultivated in 2009, thus making it commercially available and spurring researcher on it therapeutic uses. It's sclerotium, okay? The, the sclerotium part of this mushroom is extracted and have been shown to have the properties such as antioxidant, sorry, antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, anti-asthmatic uh, and able to enhance the immuno, sorry, immuno, immunomodulatory activities. Okay, recent in silico absorption, distribution, metabolism, secretion, and toxicity, analysis revealed that, uh, that most compounds from TMM extract were uh, orally active and high absorption rates were demonstrated by at least 10 of the compounds. So this is from the uh, latest study about the tiger meat mushroom. I also found that this mushroom is really interesting to study more. Okay, so that's why uh, I think I have two research study regarding the tiger meat mushroom currently. Okay, now we move to the next one. So in this slide, I show you the appearance or the figure of the tiger meat mushroom. As you can see, this is the cap, okay, the type, okay, the type of the mushroom. And uh, the, the white one is the sclerotium of the mushroom that have been used uh, mostly as the medicinal, uh, uh, medicinal supplement, okay? So this is, and at the right hand, the, the, the mushroom after it bloom, uh, in the soil, on the soil, as you can see, only the, the cap of the mushroom and the stipe can be seen, but not the sclerotium. The sclerotium will be uh, behind uh, or under, underneath, okay, underneath. All right. Are you okay so far? <laughs> okay. Okay, next we move to the next slide. Okay, so... It is uh, weird actually to have only to hear only my voice, okay, during the, this talk for one hour actually. So I hope everybody is okay so far. So I can see that there are 65 participants involved for today. Thank you very much. Okay. So now we move to the next slide, which is Ganodoma. So Ganodoma is also considered as a medicinal mushroom. So usually used as a medicinal supplements, okay not to be eaten uh, as a 
part of the dishes or raw so it is uh, the, the taste is not so good okay so that's why it is uh, the the this type of the mushroom has been extracted and has been used as a uh, bioactive compound in most of the medicinal supplement okay so ganoderma species are important wood decaying fungi occurring throughout the world okay so usually uh, it is uh, the 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 it is as a as a ecological properties it is very good actually okay to preserve the nature so most species of ganoderma are pathogenic causing root and stem root which result in the death death of the affected trees so for your information this kind of um fungi or the mushroom is always affected the palm oil palm oil um palm oil industry so it is not uh, preferable to have this type of the mushroom at the pine oil plantation, okay? Because it can cause the tree to be affected and also to be uh, to be uh, died, okay? So that's that's the main problem with the palm oil plantation. This kind of the mushroom, the the genus is particularly diverse in the tropics where it affects plantation crops such as uh, oil palm, coconut rubber. Uh, pros, uh, prosopis, uh, cinerea, betel nut tree, and also the forest tree uh, itself. So apart from these many wild and cultivated basidomycid mushroom have long been consumed mainly for their high protein content. So as you can see uh, in this slide, based on the analysis, the crude protein represents roughly 20 to 30% of the dry matter. Uh, it's also uh, rich in vitamin B, low fat and being free of cholesterol okay so it is an important medicinal mushroom being used in the clinical pharmaceutical and nutritional industries sorry in, in nutritional industry for the treatment of various diseases such as migraine hypertension asthma hepatitis cancer and also cardiovascular problems okay so next so as you can see in this slide, this is how the Ganoderma looks like, okay? The appearance or the physical properties of the Ganoderma. Okay, next we move to the Cordyceps, okay? Cordyceps is a genus of parasitic fungi that grows on the larvae of insects. So when this fungi attacks their host, they replace, replace its tissue and sprout long slender stems that grow outside the host body. So uh, this is actually the another study done, uh, which is ongoing right now um, um, in my team. So the Cordyceps, okay, because of the 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 high price of the Cordyceps due to their um, due to their medicinal properties. So that's why we we want to study more about this uh, kind of the mushroom. So the uh, yeah, I continue. The remain of the insects after after this fungi attack the host, so the remain of the insect and fungi have been hand collected. Okay, both the insect and also the fungi, which remain uh, inside the body of the host, okay, have been collected, dried, and used in the traditional Chinese medicine for centuries to treat fatigue, sickness, kidney disease, and low sac drive. Okay. So supplements and products containing cordyceps extract have become increasingly popular due to the many purported health benefits. So it is very good actually for, for, for uh, men and also for the women. So uh, we have some uh, problem with the, with the intimate, okay? So one of, one of the more than 400 species of cordyceps dis discovered to have become the focus of health research uh, including the Cordyceps synesis on Cordyceps military cyst. So this is uh, the, the two prominent species studied so far, okay, uh, from the 400 species of the Cordyceps. So for in the next slide, I show you the figure of the Cordyceps. As you can see, uh, so this is uh, the, the fungi contained inside the body of this uh, of this host, of this insect, and they are collected together uh, and followed by the extraction. Okay, so this is the figure of the Cordyceps. Okay, now I move to the research sharing. Okay, uh, I think I have about 25 minutes more. Okay, uh, to share about my research sharing. So for today, I choose only uh, the one that has been completed. Okay, 
uh, which is the cultivation of the oyster mushroom using pineapple waste. Okay, this is the, the, the completed study from my team. Okay, now we move to the next slide. Okay, so in this slide contain a lot of words. Okay, so I'm sorry for that. So as you can see, the cultivation of edible mushroom is one of the most efficient way to recycle agriculture waste. Okay, in order for us to uh, to what to convert the byproduct from the agriculture, we make it. Uh, we put the added value by using it as the medium for the mushroom. Actually, so this uh, this is the things uh, that people do nowadays. So agriculture waste actually comprise of high concentration of lignocellulose, with cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin as the main component, which is good actually as the medium of the mushroom. Okay, it can be the mushroom substrate that can subsequently transform the waste into a uh, sorry that can subsequent subsequently transform them okay into a more protein rich biomass and influence the mushroom yields. Okay, so ocean mushroom can use many agricultural waste as substrate. This is based on the study. There are a lot of study that use the agricultural waste as a substance or as a medium for the cultivation of the ocean mushroom. Based on the earlier study, prioritized species may be capable of utilizing over 200 distinct substances. Okay, so this is very, very uh, what interesting, interesting facts actually. Okay, so substrate composed of sodas and wheat bran is commonly used in mushroom cultivation. Okay. This is the study from uh, in 2019. Producing edible mushroom with crop residue as a substrate is thus a value adding process since it can transform the things that would otherwise be considered as trash and can also harm to the environment into the human nourishment. Okay, it is uh, Malaysia nowadays is towards the zero waste, zero agriculture waste. So this is actually the, the, the things that is good actually to uh, what to achieve the aims of the go government. Okay, next. Okay, so it is reported that pineapple market has increased dramatically in recent years with export increasing from three to four million tons from 2016 to 2019. So Malaysia is one of uh, pineapple exported in Southeast Asia, exported about 42,000 metric tons of pineapple in 2018. Okay, as the demand for the pineapple grows, so does the amount of pineapple uh, produce resulting in huge amount of waste. Okay, because of the demand of the pineapple itself. So the, 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 uh, which is increased, so the amount of the waste produce also increased. So it is parallel actually. And it is reported that 70% of pineapple is consumed fresh while the leftover is turned into waste. So this is the facts actually happen. Okay, so pineapple crop residue is abundant in production region. In the uh, past, this crop residue was dumped, decomposed and burned in the pineapple field. So this is the things that will affect the environmental. So the pineapple crop residue is high actually in organic compounds like cellulose, which could be used as a substrate for the mushroom cultivation. Okay, next. So this is the research approved uh, from my team where we do the sample collection, okay, followed by substrate preparation and inoculation, and then incubation and harvesting the mushroom block characterization and analysis of the mushroom harvest, determination of mineral and nutrient composition, and then lastly, the data analysis. So this is some of the research outcome that I can share for today with the uh, respected uh, audience, the students, the lecturers, okay? So uh, you, as you can see, the, we, we study, we, we try to analyze the mycelium growth uh, rate from two types of the oyster mushroom, which is the P pulmonarius and P ulceratus. So it is actually the white oyster mushroom and the gray oyster mushroom respectively, okay? So the pineapple waste composition that have been used is range from 20 to 100%, okay? So we use two kinds of uh, pineapple waste, which is wet 
pineapple waste and dry pineapple waste. Okay, so we see by using this kind of waste, how much time is required for the mycelium to be grown. Okay, so based on the study, the growth rate of the mycelium decreased as the percentage of pineapple residue, re, residue composition increase. When we increase the composition of the pineapple waste, the time required for the mycelium to use, uh, I mean the, the fungi to use the medium is become harder actually, okay? So um, the differences in the type of percentage with substrate use also influences the result of the mycelium growth rate. Means that uh, wet pineapple waste and dry pineapple waste give different uh, results based on the preference of the mycelium to grow, okay? So can we move to the next slide? And then after that, we do some analysis on the characterization of the oyster waste, or sorry, oyster mushroom, I mean. So in this figure, as you can see uh, in A, figure 1A, it is the average number of fruiting bodies per harvest. And in B, is the average weight of fruiting bodies per harvest, okay? So the use of the, what I can conclude from the data, the use of dry pineapple waste substrate for the peel pool manarius cultivation showed 60% composition of the dry pineapple waste recorded the highest number of protein bodies and the average weight means that 60% uh, composition of uh, of the dry pineapple waste is preferable for the for the pea pulmonary pulmonaries to cultivate or for the cultivation or I mean for the cultivation of pea pulmonaries. However, for the other species which is pea osteratus, okay, uh, it also showed the the same value, the same percentage of the waste which is also 60% composition of the dry waste, okay? Gave the same value. And however, the use of dry pineapple waste substrate show 40% composition recorded the highest uh, fruiting bodies per harvest, okay? For the, for, the, for the weight, okay, it is 40%, okay? Uh, and the, others, uh, the other one, uh, which is 60%, okay? For the number of the fruiting bodies, okay? So next, we move to the next slide. Okay, now I move to the analysis and characterization of our schema. So still in the same topics. However, we try to study the another parameter, which is the average length of the fruiting bodies. How, how big or how, how long the, 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 the produce, the resulted mushroom have been produced from the, from the, cultivation of the mushroom by using the pineapple waste. We also studied the average weight of the pileus, means that the, the, the start of the mushroom, okay? The length and also the weight of the pileus. So from the study, uh, it is 40% uh, of the dried pineapple waste is also uh, what reported the highest, the highest value for, the, for both of the average length and also average weight for the P pulmonaries and for the P osteritis, okay, it is a 40%, okay, same, 40% also. And we move to the next slide. Okay, still in the analysis and characterization, the next parameter is the average weight of the style and average diameter of the pileus. So if I can uh, go fast, okay, based on the study, still the 40% of the Dry pet apple waste give the highest data, okay, for these two parameters, okay. So next, so uh, in this slide, I show you the analysis of the proximate composition of the mushroom samples. So there are several parameters have been studied, which is the moisture, ash, protein, fat, and carbohydrate, okay. So the control is the commercial, commercial uh, medium, which is 100% sawdust, okay. And then uh, we put, we take the, the, the best one, which is 60%, okay, of the wet dry apple waste and 60% of the dry pet apple waste for the P oscillators. And same goes to the P pulmonary, pulmonaries. And from the study, we can say that 
the percentage of the moisture content okay was higher was formed between 75.16 to 78.67 percent which was slightly lower than moisture content of pea pulmonarius and pea oscillators cultivated using 60 percent okay produce the highest value compared to 60 percent of pea oscillators okay and uh, and I also put some information about the pea pulmonaries uh, using the um, uh, meanwhile for the pea pulmonaries the value of the moisture content vary from uh, eighty to eighty seven percent. Okay, so uh, based on the data, the grey oyster mushroom have a higher moisture value than white oyster mushroom. Okay, this is based on the uh, analysis. Okay, so we move to the next one. So I also studied the ash content of the ocean mushroom for both uh, gray and white ocean mushroom, where the uh, the data explained that the low percentage of ash, uh, sorry, the of ash content obtained in ocean mushroom in the study, which is below two percent, as it is a natural food sample. Okay. Next, we move to the protein. Okay. So what I can conclude is that. This result indicates that ocean mushrooms are capable of being a rich source of protein in the diet based on the analysis. Okay, so as you can see, uh, by using the commercial uh, medium, which is 100% sawdust, uh, cultivation of the mushroom by using the pineapple waste can increase the content of the protein. So this is very good actually, uh, where nowadays we face the problem of the food security. So means that this mushroom can be an alternative food, uh, which is high in protein content. Okay. Now we move to the fat. Okay. So what I can conclude is that both ocean mushroom studied can be categorized as low fat food as the value did not exceed the limit stated by the FDA. And then uh, I go to the next one, which is the carbohydrate. So what I can conclude from the carbohydrate is that the carbohydrate are the second major nutrient component in ash mushroom, and, and, uh, and it will enable this type of uh, this, uh, this mushroom to be uh, the good source of the energy. Okay, other than protein, the ash mushroom is also uh, contain higher uh, carbohydrate. So as you can see, some of the values stated in this uh, table uh, show that uh, by using the uh, pineapple waste, it also can increase the level of the carbohydrate in the sample, in the mushroom, I mean. Okay. Next. So I, uh, despite uh, the proximate analysis, I also did some analysis of the mineral content. So based on the table, the micro elements differed accordingly to the order. Okay, potassium, sodium, ferrum, zinc, and so on. So the results show that the higher p value were produced from p oscillators. Okay, uh, cultivated using pineapple with substrate. Okay, so this is uh, from the analysis. So yeah, I hope that uh, I've I finished everything actually before one hour. Okay, uh, <laughs> so maybe we can go to the Q and A if you have any question for me. So thank you very much. So if you have any anything regarding the research collaboration or postgraduate opportunity, you can contact me. So this is my email, and this is I also put the the my phone number. You can text me or you can WhatsApp me later on. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Go back to the moderator. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Iz. Okay, that was one interesting topic regarding the mushrooms, right? Uh, previously, we just ate the mushroom just like that, right? But we don't uh, basically know what's the component of it as well as its uh, medicinal components as well. So, uh, dear students, do anyone have any questions? We can start our discussion with Dr. Iz, perhaps. Anyone wants to ask question regarding the beautiful mushrooms <laughs> that we that Dr. Iz just showed? Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, Doctor, I would like to ask uh, a few questions actually. 
Okay. So, uh, the one that you showed uh, regarding the the mushroom that uh, have like pink and yellow color, is it also consumable or is it okay for us to consume that? <laughs> yeah, it, actually, this is uh, uh, what the different species of the oyster mushroom. So, it is edible actually. Oh, okay. uh, however, it is not commercially cultivated maybe because of the properties of the mushroom itself because it is hard to, the shelf life of the mushroom is not so longer. So that's why uh, most of the time, uh, grey oyster mushroom, okay, have been, or white oyster mushroom have been uh, artificially cultivated and uh, available in the market. But actually, there are many species of the oyster mushroom, which is the, the another species, as you can see in my slide, uh, which is the pink one and the yellow one. And it is edible. Don't worry. <laughs> so basically, actually, uh, in Jogja itself, mm -hmm. uh, there is this one restaurant uh, mm -hmm. we call the Jamuran. Uh, Jamur is actually an uh, Indonesian name for mushroom, right? Okay. So the main dish is actually yeah. mushroom. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, so if you, you come to Jogja, you can go and see this the Jamuran restaurant, what kind of mushroom they actually <laughs> Oh, you think that the Jamura is the another name for mushroom? The jam uh, jam jamur. Jamur is the name of uh, mushroom. Uh, apa? Istilah nama jamur Good. for mushroom. Good to know that. I, 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 I can't wait to have maybe uh, uh, our faculty, FIS can uh, what can conduct a visit to your university after this. <laughs> uh, sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, there are a lot of things that we can do together actually. Maybe Dr. Adila, you can you can discuss with our dean regarding the visit. I, I would like to have yeah. Jamo there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we have a question from Bu Anissa Kumaira. Mm -hmm. So here, what components in mushrooms can be used in the treatment of cancer? Okay, so actually, different. Uh, there are many things that can, uh, which is the bioactive elements in the mushroom that can be used for the tra uh, cancer treatment. There are a lot of in vivo, in vitro, and cl clinical studies, and some of the bioactive uh, com uh, components I can say is that, for example, beta glucan, antioxidant, and so on. This is uh, the 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 hot topics actually the hot elements that have been studied so far that uh, can contribute to the cancer treatment am i answer your question what uh, anisa right anisa where are you anisa can i see your face <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, all of anisa. all of uh, participant here is student is it, is it uh, some of it is lecture Bu oh, Anissa just now is one of our lecturer here oh sorry doctor sorry okay. <laughs> <laughs> i thought student sorry sorry doctor <laughs> okay another question for me uh, i was interested in the lignocellular space mm -hmm. because previously my research was uh, on the palm trees Mm -hmm. uh, oil palm tree uh, in Malaysia. I studied in Malaysia before. So uh, I was using the lignocellular space for to use it as paper, to make mm -hmm. paper. Mm -hmm. But I was also interested that this uh, lignocellular space can be used for the uh, uh, fungi culture and yeah. farming. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. have you actually found any research or have any plan to use uh, oil palm as the substrate for the cultivation? Yeah, uh, thank you for your question, very interesting. Before this, I have one study regarding the use of the palm oil waste uh, to cultivate the Volvarela species. And interestingly, uh, I, found, uh, I found that, uh, yeah, uh, this kind, uh, sorry, in Malaysia actually, um, Borovarilla usually uh, grown um, from the pineapple waste. Uh, sorry, pineapple blah, the palm oil waste. Okay, so in my study, I compare uh, the preference of the Borovarilla by using uh, 
pine palm oil waste and also the pineapple waste. So the lignocellulose content, the fiber content make the borvarilla prefer to use a pineapple more than the palm oil. So traditionally, people here use uh, cultivate, I mean cultivate the borvarilla, the one that I showed in my slide, which is very precious uh, by using the palm oil waste. Okay, so this is another study from me regarding the, the waste from the palm oil. So okay. in preference, is it because of the lignocellulose content uh, percentage or any other components of the pineapple itself? Maybe, but for me, because of the fiber the, that can contribute into the uh, nutrient and carbon source, make the, the fungi prefer the pineapple more than the palm oil. Okay, where maybe because of the, the uh, easy for them to absorb the nutrient and the carbon content, okay, from the lignocellulose itself. So make them prefer to use this kind of the waste, okay, to be grown. Okay, this is the thing. Okay, thank you. It's quite interesting. Okay, okay. Uh, there's uh, one more question here from Ade Salwa. What is enoki fungus there? are dangerous bacteria to consume? What do you mean here? What is it? Enoki fungus is kind of the mushroom, which is very good, very nice mushroom because of it is very, I mean, very delicious. They are dangerous bacteria. Uh, it is not ba ba uh, bacteria actually, it is uh, mushroom. <laughs> okay. So it, it is okay to be consumed. Uh, I think... Uh, Edible. I think uh, what Ade said here, there was this news regarding this enoki fungus, right? Previously, uh, cannot be consumed. Have you heard about that <laughs> news before? Um, just a period of time, just in a period of time, I think. I'm not sure, but maybe uh, it is not about the fungus. Is that maybe because of you mentioned about bacteria, maybe during the preparation of the of the food, okay, that have been put in the market, maybe there are some contamination from the bacteria that make the 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 mushroom cannot be eaten. So this is my my uh, opinion. I, I I'm not sure about this uh, about this one. You say that some issue before this. I'm not sure, but when you say bacteria, so what pop up in my head is that it may be during the preparation of the mushroom itself, okay, before they, they are marketed in the, in, the, in the market, okay, they are put in the market. So maybe uh, at that time, maybe there are some contamination during the food preparation. So this is my opinion for that question. Great. So, any more questions from the student? Okay, from Tivia Karti Gayan. Okay, good day, Dr. Nur Mazila. Do you believe that medicinal mushrooms could eventually replace pres uh, prescription medications? Okay, in my point of view, thank you for your question, Tivia. I also have student named Tivia, and she's a very smart student. Okay, I hope you're also the smart one. I can see your face smiling right now. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, for me, uh, in my point of uh, personal view, I cannot say that what is uh, what suggested by doctor is we, we need to neglect what is uh, or we need to uh, what um, something advised by doctor, something uh, given by doctor, we need to take it uh, as pres prescribed. So whatever from the from our food, it is become the supplement. It is uh, just to support whatever we, we take from the medicine, from the drugs, I mean. So it is just an alternative. That's why we call it as the alternative medicine. Okay, just to support, just as, uh, as the optional, actually. Maybe some of the drug, we cannot consume some of the drugs, right? So this is why we need to, to think, okay, to, as the alternative, we can take the, the natural food, okay, as the supplement, okay? So this is my, my comment for that question. Okay, Tivia, thank you. Okay, any questions from the floor? Dear students? Okay, uh, committee, please, can you please uh, send the attendance form here? Uh, 
All right. So uh, while waiting for other students to ask, uh, let me remind you all that during every session, we will uh, ask the participants to fill in the attendance list. So from each session, the first session today, and then the, the second session, we will ask you to fill in the attendance as well. And somehow our parties, uh, our committee will randomly take a screenshot of your uh, of the Zoom so we could detect whether the students is available all the time or in and out or something like that, okay? All right, so is there anyone who wants to ask questions to Dr. Ivy? Maybe students from UNISA? Or UMP? <laughs> Or maybe anything regarding mushroom that you wanted to ask. It doesn't have to be uh, like all the mushrooms that uh, Dr. IC mentioned, but maybe some mushrooms that you are quite interested into. So you could ask about that as well. Uh, okay. Uh, doctor, may I ask, is there any, actually, there's uh, this limitation in consuming the edible mushroom? Limitation, you mean? Um, the limited uh, intake, daily intake. Or... Uh, yeah, actually, everything that we take uh, should have the limit, actually. So uh, sometimes uh, there are there are some people that cannot uh, what cannot um, uh, consume a lot of uh, some food. So same goes to the mushroom. So uh, sometimes it can make you uh, it can cause the inflammation and so on. So it is this depend on your body. Okay. So that, that's that's what I can respond. So uh, from the medicinal mushroom. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know any component which is used in our current medication, for example, mm -hmm. the ones uh, used in uh, pills and everything, uh, those kind of medication? Is mm -hmm. there any available using mushrooms? So uh, what I can share from my research study currently, so uh, for the tiger meat mushroom, so the things that is very valuable is the beta-glucan itself. So beta glucan is good. Uh, what uh, to uh, for the for the diabetic people? Okay. Uh, also as the what element uh, as the anti-inflammation and so on. This is the things that we when we study, we do the analysis and comparison. We found that the beta glucan content from the tiger meat mushroom is higher compared to the other mushroom, other medicinal mushrooms. So this is the good things that I would like to explore more after this. And the other study that I can share today is the cordyceps, okay, from the cordyceps. So cordyceps is also the bioactive uh, elements, which is uh, good uh, for the cardiovascular disease and so on. So actually we, when we consume something from the nature, it is because of the bioactive elements that contain in that uh, in that uh, uh, sample actually so this is the things that I would like to hide uh, to highlight okay all right so question from FE FIFA good morning doctor have you tried transforming the edible cultivated mushroom to a food supplement product or penambah perisa so this is a good, I think this is a good, uh, what I can say, um, idea for me. Maybe I can do that after this. As a, maybe we can do it as the alternative for the MSG, monosodium glutamate, because mm -hmm. uh, as you know, MSG is not good for us, but MSG is also have the imami, uh, imami taste, which cause the food uh, become uh, what, tasty. So maybe uh, I can check the the imami uh, element whether it is present in the mushroom or not, and maybe we can uh, make the product. So Effie, if you want to join me, please let me know. We can uh, make the product together. <laughs> can be <we> so. <laughs> uh, All right. You can uh, WhatsApp me. We can we can discuss it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know whether it's lecturer or student, but if, it, if you are lecturer, it is very good. So we can have a collaboration after this. Okay, another question coming from Idris. Which one from all the edible mushroom that you have mentioned before that is the easiest we can grow at home? Okay, so a student. Okay, you can join my lab after this, Effie. Okay. <laughs> FYP, FYP. <laughs> yeah, FYP. Oh, yeah, FYP also. We can do a FYP project in UMP and also in UNISA. It's good, actually. Okay. I have the uh, the money for the for that. <laughs> okay, so, good, good. <laughs> uh, which one from all the edible mushroom that you have mentioned before that are the easiest we can grow at home? So basically, um, I cannot show you right now. Uh, but after this, I will go to Kuala Lumpur to have uh, some exhibition about our invented product. We call it as cendawan nanas. Okay, non uh, pineapple mushroom actually. So this is the things that we want to uh to what to show to people where they can easily grow mushroom at their home actually. So the the to answer your question, the easiest mushroom that can be cultivated at home and it is not harmful to our health is actually the grey ocean the the ocean mushroom. If uh. Not only limited to gray one, it can be also uh, it also can be the white ocean mushroom. So it is uh, very easy to grow. Just uh, need uh, the the block that contain the uh, the sawdust. The commercial one is the sawdust. Okay, so we just need to spray uh, two times per day. Okay, and then we wait some time, uh, not more than one month, and you can pick the, the, the mushroom at least five times. After you pick uh, first, after you have a first pick, and then you, you, you uh, what it need at least three to four days to produce another product, another, another, what, another fruiting bodies from the block. So this is uh, very interesting because nowadays uh, it is not only in Malaysia, uh, if I can say, in the world, uh, around the world, uh, nowadays have the issue with the food security. So this is uh, what I can share. The mushroom is the easiest things that we can um, what we can grow okay around our home, and it also have uh, a lot of nutrition, especially protein. We need protein a lot, okay, for our muscle and so on. So this is the things, okay. Idris, I hope I, I answer your question. All right. Is there anyone who wants to ask question or directly you can just open your camera, raise hand and just unmute your yeah. microphone and directly ask to Dr. Izzy. I would like to see your, your, your face. Okay. And also hear the voice. <laughs> yeah. Dear students, ada? Tak ada? <laughs> So Delta, what is your, this is personal, what is your most favorite uh, mushroom to eat? <laughs> Actually, I'm not, uh, honestly, I'm not into mushroom so much. <laughs> oh, okay. But I can say that the, the button mushroom or the borbarilla is the nice one. Okay, to, uh, it is very delicious. It is uh, what, it is good actually. You, you need to try that. <laughs> button mushroom. We have a lot of button mushroom here. Yeah, I know Indonesia. Indonesia is have a lot of product, agriculture product, right? That's why I asked Dr. Adila to set a treat to Indonesia. You need to actually. <laughs> let's go, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any more questions? Students? This is uh, one of the great chance for you to actually ask Dr. Izzy, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, there's another question from Marwah Amalia. Good morning, doctor. Could you tell me how can we know the difference between edible mushrooms and medicinal mushrooms based on their physical characteristics? Actually, um, the difference between edible mushroom and medicinal mushroom, actually we cannot see it clearly because some of the edible mushroom is also considered as medicinal mushroom because as you can see during my presentation, 
Uh, there are a lot of the medicinal properties also in the edible mushroom. But however, some of the medicinal mushroom cannot be consumed directly. It means that it is, it is not edible. So as you can see, maybe because of the structure of the medicine, medicinal mushroom, for example, Ganoderma. So Ganoderma is a little bit uh, what uh, pahit and also it is hard to be consumed. Okay, because of the caps is very hard and also the order is not so good. So maybe that's why most of the time it is extracted and then to, to extract the bioactive compound from the Ganoderma and it is become the, uh, the ingredient okay, in the medicinal supplement, okay, in the food supplement, I mean. All right. Does that uh, answer your question, Mara? Okay, another question from Suchi Inda. Uh, hello, doctor. May I ask how do we distinguish mushroom that can be used for medicine? Almost the same question. Same question. <laughs> I think you should uh, try and uh, test it on laboratory, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We need to check the, the, the component of the mushroom. Okay, what is the, the major component? So most of the time for the medicinal mushroom, the major components is uh, have the effect for the for the some of the disease. I can say, for example, it is good for the cardiovascular for the for the diabetic patients. So that's why most of the time it is extracted directly. Okay, for the medicinal. Uh, so doctor, what makes uh, these fungi or mushroom cannot be directly eaten? Because of the flavor, most of the time, the odor, the taste is not so nice to be eaten. That's why uh, oh. you cannot eat it raw as a raw sauce like that. All right. All right. Uh, yeah. What, a, uh, what yeah. about like yang macam beracun or something like that? Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, uh, from my experience, most of the poisonous mushroom is, is poisonous uh, uh, we can say that uh, from the elderly, from the traditional, uh, uh, there are some some category of the mushroom that has been identified from our folk people. Okay, so and then after that we confirm it in the lab whether it is poison poisonous or not. Whether it, it is it means that it is not categorized under edible and also medicinal. So we need to test it. Okay, that's why when you go into the forest, you can uh, just uh, simply pick the mushroom uh, from the ground. Okay, because some of them maybe contain the, the dangerous uh, element. All right, and the, the question from Effie Fever, dear doctor, from your previous experiment to grow mushroom with pineapple waste, is only cellulose being needed or others? Okay. There are, as I mentioned uh, in my slide, okay, there are a lot of things that are required for the growth of the mushroom. For, uh, most of the time, it is the new, uh, uh, what carbon source and new, uh, nitrogen source. So this is the thing, the major things required for the for the growth of the mushroom, okay, other than cellulose, the fiber, and so on, okay. And this is another question, moderator, from Shiki. Uh, yeah, from Shiki Lee. Uh, how to know whether the mushroom is edible or poisonous? <laughs> Same. I think I already answered that. We, we cannot know unless we have some idea or some advice from the folk people, from the, from the traditional, info, uh, from the previous information from, uh, from our, uh, maybe from the native people, uh, whether the, the, the mushroom can, can be eaten or not. If not, we need to test it in the lab. If we don't have any information, then we need to test it. Okay? All right. All right. Any more questions from the floor? Is all of you clear enough with uh, the mushroom? Okay. One more question. There's one more question here, doctor, from Nur Suraya. Truffle is one of the most expensive mushroom. There is any way can it be grown artificially? Yeah, I know about truffle. Truffle is very expensive mushroom because of the exotic 
taste of this kind of the mushroom. Actually, uh, uh, from my experience, most of the mushroom can be cultivated artificially in the lab, as long as we have the sauce. So for the truffle, maybe because of the sauce itself, it's hard to get. So that's why we didn't know whether it can be cultivated in our lab or not. But maybe if we Google it or we search it in online, we can see whether there are any study regarding the cultivation of truffle. I think uh, maybe it has because of the of the economical value of the expensive value of the truffle, people want to um, what to make it easy to have. So that's why maybe there are, maybe there are some study outside that, that we don't know. But for me, I don't have any idea for that. But uh, based on my experience, as long as we have the sample, we can take the tissue and we can do the cultivation. Okay, during uh, using the artificial media. Okay. So next, maybe we should try and cultivate truffle. <laughs> yeah, sure. If we have the, if Indonesia UNISA have the sample, we can do it together. <laughs> All right. Any more questions from the floor? Maybe we can finish earlier if we don't have. Any yeah. <laughs> The Is there, <laughs> yeah, we can take a picture. Please, dear students, open your camera. Where are you all? <laughs> okay, I can see some students coming in. All right. Now, you too. <laughs> we have, we could see some faces, right? All right. More? I'm waiting. All right, uh, committee help uh, me to uh, take a picture snap, okay? In the count of three, one, two, three, smile. All right. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. IZ. If you have any more words to say to the students or to before you end the session? Before I end, I would like to say thank you again to the organizer for inviting me and I hope to have a further collaboration with UNISA uh, in the future. Thank you. Inshallah, inshallah. Thank you very much, Doctor. All right, dear students, uh, we will move on to our next session at uh, about 15 minutes. So uh, while during the break, I will uh share to you some videos of indonesia or malaysia or unisa or ump so okay we will take a 15 minutes break so we'll be back at 10 10 indonesian time or uh, 11 10 Malaysian time okay thank you all see you again Okay, for today, so tak perlu uh, formal sangat. We can all do uh, in a relaxing way. Okay.
Okay, so dear students, uh, may I have your attention as well? Uh, please also on your camera as well as using your background, virtual background as for your uh, Zoom background, okay? All right, so before we start, okay. Okay, this will be our second session for today. And our speaker for today will be Mr. Arif Bimantara, Sarjana Perikanan, Master of Biotech, as well as Sharifa and Tegar, a student from UNISA as well, will be joining uh, Pak Arif, uh, Mr. Arif, to give uh, the talk for this second session on Mediocres. Topic growth media for plant made from plastic waste. All right. So before I invite uh, Mr. Arif Bimantara, I would like to share his CV. All right. Uh, okay. Let me share. Okay, just a second. All right, so for our today's speaker, which is, uh, will be Mr. Arif Bimantara, our head of program biotechnology in INISA. And for his information, Pa Arif, um, normally we call him Pa Arif, right? He's from nationality from Indonesia, a major biotechnology. So previous uh, academic qualification, uh, graduated from Universitas Gajah Mada, uh, Yogyakarta, as well as for his master. And the topic that he uh, presented in his research was uh, regarding Ikan Krapu Tikus, which is the bioencapsulation vaccine, Petanoda virus, dengan Artemi species, untuk mencegah viral nervous necrosis pada larva. So his research is regarding fish, okay? His uh, expertise in fish, but also other expertise in biotechnology as well, right? And recent publication, uh, his research with the UNISA students as well is about the comparison of pocket PCR and water-based uh, RT-LAM assay for SARS-CoV-2 detection. So Mr. Arif previously has research regarding the COVID-19 uh, as well as uh, kajian molecular probiotic asal susu uh, ASI, yeah. Dalam sintesis exopolysaccharida with uh, several of the lecturers here as well. So without further ado, may I invite Mr. Arif Bimantara to give his lecture for today's topic, Mediocres. The time is yours. Okay, terima kasih. Thank you, Ms. Sarfina. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. <coughs> Thanks to the committee that gave me opportunity to have session in this workshop and also good, good afternoon everyone. I hope your soul still with you <laughs> so you can follow this session until the end. I try to finish this session as soon as possible before the sleepy virus attacking you. Okay, today uh, before uh, I will share my slide okay is my slide seen on your screen yes okay okay today we will discuss and practice together uh, about one of the 
alternative to reducing waste in our environment. We will try to transform one kind of uh, plastic waste uh, to become something that giving us a benefit, not only for our life, but also for our sustainability environment. Okay. Do you know wall -E? Yes, this one. Uh, a cute robot, uh, the small robot that live in the landfill. Uh, I think it's a mechanic uh, landfill, uh, machinery landfill. Uh, if we see this picture, some people may believe that this picture is only exist in a movie or in an animation movie. But uh, actually, this kind of place that we call landfill or open dump is really exist in our world. And most countries uh, have this special area to store its waste. And the landfill area will be grow as fast as uh, the growing of the people population, because this one. Nah. Waste generated per person per day range for 0 0.11 to 4.54 kilograms. It's more than a weight of the newborn baby, 4554 kilograms per day. So. Uh, Based on this data from the World Bank, it's predicted that in 2050, in the East Asia and Pacific area, the waste, uh, the total waste in this year is up to 714 million tons. Remember, this is waste, not gold or money or what that we we like. Uh, the definition of waste based on the Oxford Dictionary, waste is a material that is not wanted or the un unusable remains or by products or of some things. So waste is not wanted. Okay. Do you know Joker? <laughs> yes, the villain in the Batman movies. He is still wanted. That men want him, and uh, the police in Gotham City is want him. But waste is no one want the waste. Uh, that men don't need the waste. The police in Gotham is not uh, don't, don't don't want the waste. So uh, the Joker is better the waste. Although Joker is the uh, dangerous people, the bad feeling, but it's uh, better than the waste because it's still wanted. Okay. Okay. Based on this data, the global waste composition is. We look at this chart. Uh, plastic is the most abundant uh, material that can be degraded uh, naturally in the soil. It's the most abundant uh, compared to the glass or metal waste. And in the second chart, we can see that the most waste it will end up in the open dump and there is no other processing anymore in the open dump. So we uh, will focus on the plastic waste. I think uh, you, all, all of you know about this uh, plastic waste. Everyone or this, this kind of waste, we can find it everywhere. everywhere. So, uh, Based on this data, the, the plastic production is started in 1950 and it was rocketed until 2015 up to 350 million tons of plastic waste. It's a very huge amount because it's plastic, not metal or glass. So it's, it's plastic. So it's a very huge amount of plastic. So if you, if you see in this uh, picture between Malaysia and Indonesia, we have the same share uh, percentage of global plastic waste and that emitted to the ocean in 2019 with the same color. I think it's uh, between 
5% until 10%. So we have the same problem with the plastic waste. So what is the threat uh, the plastic waste to, to our uh, leaf? Okay, the first one, do you know who, who is this uh, actress? Yes, this is Christina Ferry. This is uh, the actress that seen uh, soundtrack in a Twilight movies. Okay, the plastic waste is need a thousand years, under a thousand years to degrade. So it's very long time to make this plastic is degrade in the soil. Very, very long time, a thousand years. So I think this song is related to, and, uh, to the plastic waste. Okay, and then the second one, I, I don't think that these sea turtles uh, will go to the supermarket and buy uh, margarine or something. Uh, for your information, there was a research that found that sea turtles is uh, eating, might eating the plastic waste because uh, the plastic, it smells like their food. So they think it's their food. So if we throw away the plastic waste, uh, especially trash bag or plastic bag in the ocean, the sea turtles, it will know that this, this plastic is uh, the food for them. So they eat them. So it's very dangerous. It's very dangerous uh, if, if we, uh, it's some, uh, all of plastic we throw away to, to the sea and sea turtles, uh, seems that uh, the plastic is uh, food for them. So how many, how many sea turtles will, will be poisonous by this plastic? Moreover, uh, for plastic waste that uh, generated from the household, usually uh, eliminated by burn it, by burn the plastic waste. And you know that the smoke that produced by this activity is also poisonous and very dangerous for all organisms that need clear air to live well. So let's, we are together to stop uh, the plastic pollution is in our environment. Okay, this is a big problem, I think, but uh, there is always a solution to every problem. To solve this problem, we need everyone uh, participation. And you need to know that everyone, including all of you, can be a participant in this solution activity. So we can, uh, we can make a activity together to make this world is better and uh, we can eliminate the plastic waste pollution. There are three ways, the common ways to, to manage the waste. Three are, the first R is the, to reduce the using of plastic waste. We can substitute the plastic uh, to the other material that more eco-friendly, such as a bag. And the second R is to reuse. If it's possible, we can use again our plastic those our plastic stuff to uh, other activity. And the third one is to recycle. We transform the plastic to other something, to other things that uh, it gives more benefit to us. And today we will try to transform uh, plastic. We will try to recycle one kind of the plastic waste into something that gives us more benefit. Okay, this is the one kind of those plastic. I think all of you know what is this plastic. Yes, this is a plastic bag. I think you, all of you is agree with me if I say that this is the plastic waste that most common in our society. This is the most common plastic used in our society. So why is, why is this kind of plastic which is most common in our society. Yes, in every place, uh, traditional market, supermarket, and maybe when we 
uh, by Facebook, they offer us uh, two packs, the, the stuff that we buy, okay, this uh, plastic bag. This is very common because in Indonesia, especially, uh, this is free tax. So we can free to use this uh, kind of bag for packaging. And this uh, kind of plastic waste is also the most abundant in landfill because uh, this uh, plastic bag is usually single use only. I think if you if you buy something and pack pack by this plastic bag, you use it twice. The first one when you buy something and it uh, it become uh, the the packaging, and the second one you use it for a trash bag, and not many more. But I found some creative people use the plastic bag. For this too, if it's um, in emergency when you in rainy, uh, okay, and use plastic usually waffles. It's just like I said before that uh, Joker is better than waste because he is still wanted, but plastic bag, uh, plastic waste, it's unwanted. Okay. Okay, today I will introduce you about one of the alternative, how can we transform the plastic bag, the plastic waste that uh, to, to the something that we can, uh, we can or it uh, give us more benefit. Okay, this is, he is Mr. Suryati, the inventor of Mediocrest. He is also, he is also the owner of uh, what you call it, small and medium sized enterprises. In Indonesia is UKM, Usaha Kecil Menengah, Sayi dan Agro, and he is he he transformed the plastic bag, this one, to the mediocres. Mediocres comes from words media, that means a place to grow, and kres is come from the word kresek. We call the plastic bag in Indonesia is kresek. So mediocres is a place at our, our medium for plants growth that made from uh, cresset plastic. We can get a lot of benefit when we transform this plastic plate into this mediocres, including the first is it can be uh, the growth media for plants, not, not the change the color, yeah? but we can uh, use this to growing uh, plants. And the second one, we also re reduce the plastic waste in environment, in our environment. And then because it have a uh, colorful, it's uh, colorful, we, we have uh, so many color of plastic bag. And also we do not need uh, soil to grow the plant. So, we can get uh, our garden or our, our room is more aesthetic and clean as well. Okay, so UNISA Yogyakarta have uh, assigned a rim with uh, UKM, Sayi dan Agro. So we, uh, they entrust us to introducing this technology to the society. So, this time we will practice. If you have a plastic bag and you have uh, scissors, you can you can get it. So we can practice now. And today I'm not alone. Today I'm accompanied by my student, uh, Master and Mbak Sharifa, the most handsome and beautiful men and women in multiverse of happiness. Yeah, because they are uh, always smile. <laughs> okay, Mbak Sharifa, are you ready? I am ready, sir. Okay. okay, let's get started. Please, Mbak Sarifa. So, thank you very much for the opportunity that you gave to me, uh, Mr. Arif. So, yeah, now time is mine. So, yeah, we'll open with Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning or afternoon, everyone. And, yeah, from now, uh, for no, from now on until one hour ahead, my friend, my Mastegar Prasetyo, and me, Sharifah Tiara Norintan. So, hi, everyone. 
and we'll assist everyone here to know more about Mediocres and also we'll guide you how to make it. But before we go too far, please allow me to show an interesting video about Mediocres. So I will start the video first. So and wait a minute, I will share my screen. Well, uh, excuse me, Miss Mutia, can you allow me as to be a co-host first? Yes, uh, try again. You. Okay, try again. Okay. Is it? Okay, let's start today's learning with an interesting video. So yeah, let's enjoy. Sharifa, I think the voice is not shared. Sharifa, I think the voice is not shared yet. Is there any trouble with the sound? Yes, I think you need to uh, share the... Okay the sound first oh yeah i think i have to plug out my earphones let me restart start over the video atau tegar yang Okay, Sharifa. Uh, okay, like this. Uh, I will share the video so everyone could see it clearly. Okay, hold on. Okay, so everyone want, want the video to be uh, played again? Okay, hold on. One other thing. So, check. Can anyone hear my voice? Okay. Can everyone hear my voice? Okay. Yes. So, how was the video, everyone? <laughs> I hope it's interesting, but because I think it's pretty interesting, isn't it? So, uh, from that video, have you ever imagined a life without a plastic bag pollution? Or have you already wondering how we can take care of plants without soil but plastic balls? We will show you to how to make a media press and we will show you all we will show you to all all of you how a simple step will save our environment from plastic book pollution and i proudly present media press. so if one of you wondering what exactly media press is simply 
Magic Press is a small ball that made from a plastic bag. And then this small ball made from plastic bag can be used as plant media. So you can grow a plants without soil, but only using a bowl with a nutrition in it. So, as Mr. Arif Bimantara has briefly explained before, Mediocrest stands for Media Tanpa Plastic Resect or Plastic Bag Planting Media as a solutive idea to get deal with plastic waste. Perhaps everyone has know about planting ways to get rid of this kind of pollution, isn't it? Like by start using tote bag or paper bag for avoiding single-use plastic bag, but how to overcome the after use of plastic bags? Recycle. Recycle is the answer. Through MediaCrest, we can implement recycle measures. And now, we don't have to be worried to handle plastic waste that we can find around us. And this is also will be a great idea for anyone who likes to trade plants in a cleaner way without using soil. Now let's jump to the how make it. So basically all stops and steps are simple but tricky, trust me. But don't worry, we will, we will learn together. And I believe everyone here in this forum today, we can learn together how to make it. So, first, firstly first, we just need a clean plastic bags, and then scissor and a lighter to light up the candle for sure, and then liquid, liquid organic fertilizer as uh, the nutrient for the plant growth. And the sixth is soaking container, and last stuff, we just need a drying tray. And how to make it? Okay, in here we have around a six baby steps, all is simple to do. So at first, we have a cleaning here. So if you want to make a media crust, make sure that your plastic bag is clean. It's free from oil or dirt stuff or something like that. So you can clean your plastic bag with water and soap, and then you can dry them before you cutting them. So the second step is cutting. Before we can make, before we can change the, before we can change the plastic bag turn to be a small bowl that contains a nutrients for plant growth, we have to cut them to a several pieces, okay? Cut the plastic bag into several pieces with the lengthwise. Then what we do after we cutting the plastic bags? The next step is fabricating. This is the tricky ways. This is this is the most tricky steps if you want to make a media press. But don't worry, we will we will assist you. We will guide you to make this. So in the fabricating steps, you just have to roll and twist the plastic bag pieces to be several balls with a diameter of 0.5 till 5 centimeter, and pay attention to the density because this ball will absorb the nutrient from the liquid organic fertilizer as the plant growth nutrient. Okay, so if we finally did it to make the fabricate uh, the plastic ball as a mediocre, so what we do next? Next step is soaking. So if the ball is already made, uh, already made, we just have to soak them. Like soak them in the liquid fertilizer for 20, 20 hour, 12 hours in a bucket that full of liquid fertilizer. After we soak them, uh, so uh, before, before we go to the next step, this soaking step is used for make the bowl absorb the nutrition from the liquid fertilizer. After the bowl absorb the liquid fertilizer, we can dry them before we can actually use them as the plant media. So we just have to dry them for three days, make sure all the bulb is dry well and absorb the nutrition well. And then after we're drying, after three days we're drying the media crest, we finally can use this stuff by, by only replacing plants from soil into the pot with full media crest bowl and watering. So yeah, just that, 
just we just need to do around six steps to make a medicus. I think it's pretty pretty easy, right? So this is the final product of Medicus. After you do all the steps, you will you can make this stuff and then you can use it as the plant media and you don't have to use soil anymore to grow your plants. It's pretty, pretty, pretty good. I mean, like, this is beautiful. And last but not least, I believe everyone can do this. And I believe together we can live better free from plastic bags waste because as Anne-Marie Bonus said that we don't need a handful of people doing zero waste perfectly. We need millions of people doing it perfectly. So I think uh, that's all from me. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to contact us. Uh, to contact uh, Mas Bagus or me from, uh, via email. And the next presentation will be led by Mas, Bagu Mas Tegar. And Masagar will lead us or teach us how how exactly to make uh, the media crest like kind of demonstration. So Masagar, the thumb is your. Check check that my sound is just hear it. Yes, clear enough. Good. Well, thank you the time for the time, Sharifa. Uh, well, first, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And hello, everyone. Now, um, we are almost at the end of the workshop. And yeah, I hope all of you are still on fire till the end. <laughs> Firstly, I want to say sorry for later because uh, maybe my language will be mixed like you know it. Uh, Bahasa Jawa, Indonesian, or language English language, uh, yeah. But here we all do the same way for learn something about mediocre. Well, on the first time we must know each other, right? So let me introduce myself. My name is Tegar Bagus Prasetyo, and I'm born in Kalimantan, but now I live in Yogyakarta. So uh, saya itu naturalisasi dari Kalimantan, Kalimantan to Yogyakarta. And non sewu menawi mangke my language will be mixed up. <laughs> well, as said by Mr. Arif and my friend Sarifa regarding to mediocres, I will repeat it little, <laughs> not too much. Well, mediocres is planting media that made of plastic bag, or we can call it in here plastic kresek, yeah, and which has been uh, given on organic fertilizer formula, and it's capable of being a planting media to replace soil and ya nantinya ini bisa uh, digunakan secara uh, selama bertahun-tahun hingga nanti that plastic was uh, terdegradasi gitu. uh, as we know that plastic is classified as uh, sampah anorganik and it, it's hard to uh, terdekomposisi in the soil so this time uh, the time it takes for plastic to break down naturally is up to 50 years or it can be more and the material contained in this plastic can be toxic to soil yeah, tana, uh, water and good micro mi microorganism yang nanti tinggal di dalam tanah and now uh, many of people do for uh, handling of this plastic waste is just burn it and I hope one of you not included to do that. <laughs> well, uh, it, this can make the pollution in the air and the environment uh, by toxic chemicals that contain uh, in a plastic. From there, emerge a new breakthrough for overcome the problem of plastic waste we call mediocres. Well, and now the question is how to make it? And well, let's learn together. Well, for tool and materials, uh, we need to make the mediocres is exactly, uh, you need plastic bag like this. Uh, yeah, bermacam warna, it's okay. And after that, we need a skisor and this candles and nutrition, like a uh, organic and bucket 
and that like her, like her. This now is how to make the mediocre. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, I will remove my background because that was maybe will uh, not apa yang kelihatan nanti plastiknya. Well, so uh, at the first step, we must collect the plastic bag, yeah, the plastic bag. And after that, we can cut the edge of this plastic. Itu untuk mempermudah dalam proses uh, cleaning and drying. So it's going to be like this. We just need to cut the edge of the plastic from this. Uh, can you see it all? Yeah, it should be like that. And after that, cleaning. Uh, we can use this plastic bag for cleaning. Yeah, bisa menggunakan sabun, terus kita cuci bersih. Maybe in Japanese say, uh, kita uh, mengucaknya ya. <laughs> Mungkin seperti ini. And that, well, after that, we are cutting. Eh, no. After cleaning, we are drying. Uh, this drying, it's uh, usahakan itu until completely dry. Ya, maksimal sih tiga hari. If this uh, weather is good, but it's rainy day, maybe it can one week. But make sure that's un, uh, until completely dry. And after that, we are cutting. Uh, for the size, itu menyesuaikan kebutuhan. Jadi, uh, Size-nya itu memang sesuai kebutuhan, tapi but the important thing is the diameter. When we roll and twist this plastic, ya menjadi bulat seperti ini, itu sekitar uh, 0.5 to 5 cm. Then, how to make this plastic ball? Maybe uh, you think it's easy to make it, but after you trying on the first time, you will see it can be difficult. <laughs> but well, Uh, gimana cara buat bulatan ini? Ya, yeah. kita tinggal uh, istilahnya uh, dalam Japanese language itu menguel-uel ya. So, uh, or it can say roll and twist the plastic from dari ujung sampai ujung. Jadi caranya ini hanya uh, memanfaatkan two fingers, two fingers of us. Ya, jadi dari ibu jari dan dari manis kita. So Uh, caranya seperti ini. Wait. Dari ujungnya, from the corner of this plastic. We can use this two fingers, jari manis dan jempol kita, for twist it and roll this plastic. Uh, if you can see it, like this. Just to be like this. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Oh, no, no. Just be like this. Gonna see it. Just use this finger and this. It's so oh. this. <laughs> yeah. Slowly twist and roll, twist and roll until you get until you get the shape. Yeah, it's gonna be like this. We can use this fingers and this. Roll and twist slowly, slowly, and got this. Okay. Well, I will repeat it. First, maybe you can uh, try in home, so you will know how is to make it with by your own hands. <laughs> well, this. Remember, two fingers, jari manis dan jempol. We just need this to roll and twist this plastic, become bulatan seperti ini. So I will show you. Slowly, slowly, just slowly. <laughs> 
I will slow them out. Slowly, slowly. Dari ujung sampai ujung. This. You just need two fingers and this and this to make it mediocre. And here we go. Yeah. This. It's like bullet, gitu ya, tentunya. Yeah. It's clear. Or I have to repeat this one again. <laughs> yeah, this is the last. I will repeat this one again. Once again. And this. Yeah. Maybe. You can see my hands. Just focus on my hand, not my face, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's gonna be like this slowly, slowly, the slowly. You'll get the shape, roll and twist, roll and twist again and again, almost. Got it. <laughs> this. Well. Jadi sesudah jadi bulatan seperti ini uh, ada pasti ada ujung ya ujung dari plastik yang tersisa. So we need a candle untuk merekatkan atau melekatkan ujung ini. Jadi kita gunakan lilin dari api ini. Maybe uh, I need to Well, this candle. Yeah, we need this. This sisanya, yeah. This we wrap up in the candle. Just a little fire, not a uh, burn all, right? <laughs> yeah. See, got it. Yeah, ini udah jadi bulatan seperti ini. Maybe you can try it at home. So you can tell it how to make it this bulatan. <laughs> well, yeah, it's done. Well, setelah jadi bulatan seperti ini, ya, yeah, seharusnya Langkah selanjutnya adalah nutrient arrangement. So, nutrient arrangement is done by of organic liquid like this to clean water. Oops. Yeah. After the nutrient arrangement itu dilakukan untuk uh, dengan masukkan mediocres ini ya, mediocres ini into the container of bucket that has this nutrient. And we can stir it and shock it, uh, this mediocre, selama, maybe tw uh, selama 12 hours. So after 12 hours shocking in this mediocre, um, 
after that, we can drying process. Uh, the next step, I'm sorry, the next step is drying process. So, uh, mediocre ini nanti yang sudah ada nutrisinya, uh, kita dry on place, uh, place on tray, then dry it until completely dry. Remember, dry it until completely dry. So, after that, mediocre that have dried is ready to use. And now, how? So use this mediocre to this lamp like this. Well, the method is you can remove this. Uh, what is it? Plan, yeah, or cabut ya tanaman hiasnya, and clean the roots using the water, and then place it in the, the pot, and give it the mediocre to fill the pot. And you can see this like this. Then give it a water di dalamnya. And plants that already have mediocrismus place in a shady place and not exposed to directly sun because that was can burn. No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, for uh, you can place in the shady place and not exposed to direct sun like for one or two weeks. Yeah, uh, ini untuk menca apa namanya untuk masa adaptasi adaptasi tumbuhan ini ketika nanti remove from new media. Uh, ketika sudah selesai masanya adaptasi, so we can remove it in everywhere. And watering plant, watering plant does not need to be done every day. Ini hanya dua kali dalam seminggu. Or if you want to check it, ya yeah, kalau uh, this plant is need water or not, you just need to leave it the pot. Leave the pot, and uh, if the pot still feel heavy. If the pot is still heavy, you don't need to give water because the water is contained in the magic curse is still quite a lot. And another treatment is the fertilization. It is recommended to use a sufficient amount of organic liquid fertilizer. Uh, but remember, ini nanti dicampurkan dengan clean water ya. <laughs> Jangan langsung taruh. <laughs> and yeah. The addition of fertilization can be aid ketika tanaman itu uh, layu atau lesu. Jadi butuh makan. Like us. Yeah. Ketika kita lapar dan kita mengeluarkan tanda, ya itu lemas lesu. Okay, just kidding. Okay. Just because it's 12 o'clock. <laughs> Until 11, yes, 11 o'clock. <laughs> okay, back to topic. Back to the topic. So, uh, ketika tanaman layu atau daunnya mengering, yeah, kita bisa aid this uh, organic liquid fertilizer to this plant. Well, so that was how to make the mediocres and how to use it in for plant. And I hope you all enjoy and understand it for my explanation. And I want to say sorry, ya, karena bahasa saya, bahasa saya yang katakan itu campuran. So, and yeah, now uh, saya kembalikan kepada Ibu Sarfina. All right, that is one good presentation. <laughs> really, thank uh, thank you to Bagus Tegar, Sharifa, and especially Pak Arif for the presentation for the second session about mediocre. Now let's uh, move on to the discussion or Q and A session. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, dear students, anyone wants to ask questions? Or is it not clear enough? Is it clear enough how to make this mediocre at home? I think every one of you could uh, do this uh, mediocre at home. Okay, a question from Shikili. Is it similar to hydroponics? Any one of you will answer? But that? Uh, yeah, it's uh, different with hydroponic. Uh, hydroponic itu uh, apa namanya untuk tanaman ini ya bisa untuk tanaman pangan ya. Kalau uh, mediocre ini, oh, I must turn the background first. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Hmm, kalau mediocre ini is just uh, for tanaman hias. 
like cactus or something else pokoknya untuk tanaman hias yang uh, you place it into uh, maybe living room just like that it's different like with hydroponic or, or maybe can add something uh, sure uh, maybe i'm gonna add some more answer uh, due to the question thank you for sure chili for the question is it similar to hydroponics well it's pretty similar but not that far because in hydroponics uh, concept you need a flow water to grow uh, the plants and the hydroponics actually use for a consumption vegetable or consumption plants but in mediocres it's only used for a decoration living plants and and furthermore in mediocres is no need an electricity to you know to make a temporary water flow so you just have to watering the pot like two or two or three weeks after after replacing uh, the plants but after all the same thing between hydroponics and uh, mediocres is you don't need a soil to grow the plant thank you okay more questions from the floor anyone wants to ask maybe the lecturers as well if anyone wants to ask as well okay students are you all awake? <laughs> Any questions? Or anyone doesn't have questions because everyone already understand how to make this media crass. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe from the floor. Have, has any one of you tried to make this before or have any ideas or uh, similar ideas with this uh, media quest? Who wants to share or something like that? Okay, from Ibu Ika Afifa, one question. Can mediocres be used to grow fruit crops? All right. Bisakah dipakai untuk menumbuhkan tanaman yang berbuah? Okay, thank you for Miss Ika Viva. Well, I can answer it. Uh, well, can mediocres be used to grow fruit crops? Uh, especially now, it's only for uh, tanaman hias. Jadi untuk uh, penanaman grow fruit crops itu uh, belum ya. Karena uh, nanti ditakutkan ketika uh, ditanam dengan apa namanya media mediocres ini, itu growth crop-nya, uh, nanti bisa menjadi uh, toxic. Jadi untuk tanamannya nanti uh, bisa menyerap zat-zat uh, toksik yang ada di uh, media ini. Jadi nanti ditakutkan kalau nanti kita makan dan itu nanti malah jadi racun di tubuh kita. Begitu Ibu Ika Viva. Untuk saat ini masih digunakan sebagai uh, media ke media tanam di tanaman hias. Gitu. Well, you're welcome. Okay, I think we could uh, try and make it into a research, I guess. <laughs> you plant it with a fruit tree plant and then you test it on the fruit, the, test the toxicity and everything. So it can be one of the final year projects, I think. <laughs> All right. Other questions from the floor, students? Okay. I think I I really want to see the students from Malaysia here. Mana UMP? Mana dari UMP? Give a raise hand. Hello? Kesemangat. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. Where is from Unisa? Where is from Unisa?
Okay, where is from Monisa? Why I cannot see any raised hand here? <laughs> okay, ada Aziz Maulana. Oh, I see more people from Monisa. I see. All right. Okay, more questions? Ah, uh, yang raised hand, raised hand tadi. Ah, uh, ada question? Any questions? Maybe not just about Medicrest, but other things. Okay, from Ify Fifa. Hello, doctor. What about the type of biodegradable plastic? Can they be used or just pure plastic? Jadi, okay, apakah thank, you, uh, thank you, Effie. It's, uh, it's just for a plastic bag. I think we can, cannot use the biodegradable plastic because when touch the water, it will be degraded. Mm -hmm. We use the plastic bag. I think it's a pure plastic. Okay, does that answer your question? And we need a strong enough plastic so the root can uh, hold the plastic for the, uh, so the plant can be grown well. If we use beauty creator plastic, I think the roots, it's cannot, uh, uh, what is it? Hold the, hold the plastic completely. So uh, the root will be so weak, so it can live well. The, the plant cannot live well. All right. Okay. Another question from Dr. Adila. Does Mediocrest has shelf life? Okay, thank you, Dr. Adila. Uh, it can uh, until 10 years uh, from, the, for the, from the experience, Mr. Suryadi. They also, he also uh, tried this uh, meteocrest to be implemented in the food plant, but he is not recommended to, to consume it. But this, this, this media, is also can be implemented in food plan and and based on his experience, this media can be uh, stay until ten years, or uh, it uh, depends on on the uh, plan condition. If the plan condition is we we look the plan is uh, uh, what is it uh, need watering, need need more fertilizer, we can add. But the, the plastic itself can be stay in the pot until 10 years, five until 10 years. All right. Another question from Dr. Dina. How if many moss ataupun lumut grow on the surface of the plastic and how is the, how is the effect and or good or bad? Do we need to clean it? <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I will answer Miss Dina Remindranti Paridari. How is many moss uh, lumber grow on the surface of the plastic and how is the effect and good or bad? Do we need to clean it? Um, ini bahasa Indonesia campur saja ya saya jawabnya. Jadi ketika saya ke tempatnya Pak Suryadi untuk melihat uh, apa namanya? tanaman itu yang sudah ditumbuhi seperti ini itu ada lumut dan juga sampai ada plastik yang sudah rusak itu karena sudah direnggut akar gitu itu tidak tidak apa apa ibu e, untuk apa namanya ada ada tumbuhnya lumut di dalam di plastik ini e, e, kalau untuk efek sih bagus dan tidak berpengaruh apa namanya tidak berpengaruh maksudnya merusak si tanaman dan Ya, itu nanti juga akan ikut apa namanya terdegrade dengan si plastiknya. Untuk yang saya lihat ketika apa namanya kan saya lihat ini sampai dicabut itu semua dan ada lumut-lumutnya ini. Jadi ini plastiknya itu ngikut sampai akar-akarnya juga. Jadi itu tidak apa menurut saya. So, we don't need to clean it. Just leave it. Leave it. All right. Okay, more questions?
I think it's a really interesting topic on mediocres and it's a good invention as well. Well, we can use the plastic bags who are not biodegradable for this use, and especially for uh, flowering plants, plants that that is for our garden, something like that. So we don't really need to use the soil, but we can actually use our own waste for our gardening, something like that. Okay, any more questions from the students? Okay, uh, committee, uh, you may uh, put in the chat box room for the second uh, attendance form. Okay. Okay, dear students, please uh, fill in the attendance list again because we will check whether this is going to be two-time attendancy. So please make sure to uh, fill in the form. Okay, another question from EV Fever. Doctor, kalau plastik itu sudah rusak, or ya rusak, do we just uh, continue to add the plastic bulb or we do the whole thing? Kalau misalnya yang ada rusak, siapa yang mau menjawab? Sharifah, maybe? Sure. And thank you for the questions that kalau plastik itu sudah rusak, do we just continue to add the plastic bulb or do the whole thing? Yes, of course. When you found that the plastic bulb is already broken or damaged uh, because of the time shelf, a uh, uh, life shelf, we, we just need to do as we do uh, as we do the in the early in the beginning like we just have to add more bulbs and then add the nutrition from liquid fertilizer soaking them in one container and then we just need to add the new bulb uh, to the uh, in the pot so yeah the answer is we just add the plastic bulb with uh in it with addition the of the liquid fertilizer does it answer your question FPC, sir? okay uh one more question from eka rismaningsi uh how to know that the nutrition in medial care is still fulfilled or sudah habis? And are there ornamental plants that can use this media and can't use this media? So, uh, I will answer uh, from Ms. Eka Hitsmaningsi, right? Uh, how to know that the nutrition in medial care is still fulfilled or uh, empty in it? It's just like uh, we have to check it. Check it from uh, dari luar tampak. Tampak luarnya dari tanamannya. Kalau semisal dari tanamannya itu uh, ada menampakkan layu ataupun lemas begitu ataupun uh, nanti ada daun mengering, ya itu kita bisa mengisih, uh, kita bisa add that nutrition growth factor. Oh, nutrition growth factor. Uh, I mean liquid organic fertilization to this plant. Uh, nanti cuman uh, ini pupuknya ini kita larutkan ke dalam cairan ke dalam air gitu lalu kita tuangkan saja ke dalam sini ke dalam potnya gitu ibu and are there ornamental plants that can use this media and can't use this media oke okay. uh, sejauh ini untuk semua tanaman hias bisa sih bro uh, termasuk juga anggrek yang biasanya di atas itu juga bisa ditumbuhkan dalam media ini atau juga uh, tanaman seperti cactus itu juga bisa ditanam seperti ini ya penting tanaman hias yang dia udah ada berakar entah itu akar serabut ataupun tunggang semua bisa is that it alright uh, and also the guard what about the what they call it apa quantity the quantity of the fertilizer that you need to put in or maybe we can share the video again so you can uh, briefly explain the quantity needed to make this media
Oh, okay. I see, I see. Well, how much so uh, it is, uh, how much hmm, perbanding ketika kita memakai nutrisinya itu untuk berapa mili gitu ya, sejauh ini. Yang saya tangkap seperti itu. Oke. Okay. So, uh, saya akan menjelaskan untuk nutrisi yang kita pakai ketika kita ingin uh, apa namanya merendam merendam si mediocres. So uh, the rules for use nutrient is tergantung banyak sih banyak sedikitnya mediocres yang kita buat. So if it's much of mediocres we can make it. So we have to need 10 liters of clean water and eight uh, maybe 500 milliliter of liquid fertilizer. But if just uh, ketika sedikit gitu kan, just need uh, 20.5 liter of water and eight uh, 125 milliliters of liquid fertilizer. Just be like that. Tapi untuk ketika lagi sedikit lagi, kita bisa gunain uh, 1.25 liters of water uh, and eight uh, 80, eh, 62.5 milliliter of this liquid fertilizer. Like yeah, okay. Um, clear. Okay. Uh, another question from Dr. Adila. As you mentioned, the shelf life for the mediocres is about five to ten years. What will you do with the mediocres after that? Just throw them or how? Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Adila. So after five until ten years, this plastic will be broken. So let it in the pot. We can add the new mediocres to renew to, to renew the, the media. So we, we do not need to throw them or something. We just let it in the pot and we just add uh, the new mediocres to the pot. Does it answer your question, doctor? Or you mean? Yes, yes, thank you. It's very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, maybe uh, what Dr. Adila wanted to say is that when we use the medicress, it's already dissolved, uh, degraded, and somehow. But is it okay to be used for another plant, or we should uh, bury it uh, on the soil or something like that? Or we can recycle the use of the degraded mediocres for another plan. Uh, Mr. Arif. Excuse me, can you repeat your question? So uh, the mediocres, when mm -hmm. we use it for one plan, for mm -hmm. some shelf life, it will be degraded, right? Mm -hmm. So after the degradation, uh, can the media be used uh, with additional media, new mediocres for a new plan or we need to bury it and use another mediocres uh, for a fresh one? Oh, we just need to add the new in the same place. So we can, if, if uh, the root, the, the plant roots will break uh, this mediocre. So it will, uh, the root will be inside this media so it, when we when the planets grow it will broke and uh, what is it will uh, broken this media so it will be uh, small pieces so it become a small pieces in the pot so we we just add the new media to the new material crest to the pot okay all right mm -hmm. okay any more questions from the floor Okay, does everyone already uh, fill in the attendance list? Okay, so before we end this uh, today's session, if there's no more question, maybe we could take a photo first. Okay, please open your camera. Students? All right. Okay, in a count of three. All right. Okay. Any more? 
maybe more students are opening their camera. I'm waiting. Okay, if there's no more, I will start to take the screenshot, okay? Okay, in the count of three, one, two, three, smile. All right. Thank you all. And maybe from Pak Arif, uh, Sharifah and Tegar, any last words uh, before we end our session? Okay, thank you, Ms. Safina. Okay, I think the environment problem is our problem together. So by this small experiment, just like we made a meteor press to reduce the plastic uh, plastic waste, we, all of you, all of us can be the eco superhero. I think it's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arif. From Sharifah and Tegar. Um, for me, thank you for your very kind attention. And if you have any question, don't hesitate to contact us via our email. <laughs> thank you. Tegar? Plastic waste. <laughs> all right okay uh that is all for our second day session hope all of you uh receive more knowledge uh, get gain more experience and uh and also learning about medicress as well so hopefully i could see all of you yes again on the third and the fourth day of the International Summer School. And by this, uh, I would like to say thank you to all. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow.